Okay, let's see how this goes. It's just me today in um, incredibly hot weather with no air conditioner, um, but I do have the fan going. So we're gonna see if I'm live, I'm gonna do that annoying thing where I have to mute the volume. Okay, I did it. Um, hold on. Okay, so um, I'm gonna see who's here. So when you show up, chat with me, tell me that you're here. So I know um, who's in the room, where it happened. Wah, wah. Okay. Um, <laughs> so I have a lot to tell you. Oh, Nancy's here. Hi. Okay. Now I, I never really know. It's like, what did, what did, um, oh God, I'm blanking on his name. Oh, uh, 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 uh. You know, the, 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 the mass media expert. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. Anyway, he talked about uh, why, why people jump behind, um, jump behind the newscaster and wave because they know they're really here. They know they're really alive if they see themselves on TV. So I know I'm really alive when I see you guys. Hi, Susan from North Hampton, from New Mexico, Central Florida. Um, oh, yay, you made it today from Mass, from the UK, from New Jersey. Hello, from Omaha. Um, oh, email notification, yay, from Spain. Oh, oh, what's the temperature like in Spain, by the way? Um, here in New York, we have been kind of record heat because it's pretty early, right, in June, and we're hitting the 90s kind of consistently. So, um, up here, we just have two window air conditioners. Hello from Massachusetts. We have one that is still out in the shed that we haven't brought inside yet. And that is for the living room, which we're probably gonna bring inside. And then another one that is for our bedroom, which is for sleeping. But we've put, well, we, and by we, I mean, David, my husband, put it in this room, which is where I film, because the li these lights are kind of hot. Um, and I had just a total, complete, oh my God, Anne, I'm gonna tell you about my hair in a second. I had a total brain fart. Um, and I said to him, um, oh, you know, cause it was really, really hot last night. So I said, um, oh, I'm, I'm not gonna be teaching at the next virtual Vogue, um, which is in, in July. And I'm, I'm gonna skip it because it's my friend's wedding weekend. And I just, I just can't, I just have too much stuff going on. Um, and so what I said to him was, oh, you know, I'm not teaching at the next Virtual Vogue. So after this weekend's teaching, because I'm teaching on my own platform Friday and Saturday, I'm teaching a couple more sessions of um, Perfect Your Knitting because we had 98 people on the wait list from the early June session. So I added two more to, to try to get to the wait list people. So I said, um, so after, after I teach on Friday and Saturday, I, 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 I'm not really sure when I'm going to be teaching again, because I might give myself a break um, with the two things I'm going to tell you about and not schedule um, another course, another session of live classes in July. And so by the time I ended the sentence, like the sentence began so long ago, you know, as, as you guys are, uh, as you guys just experienced, he said, oh, so we can move the air conditioning to air conditioner tonight. And I said, yeah, I, I literally forgot how the sentence began, which is I teach on Friday and Saturday. So I'm in here with no air conditioning and it's not bad with the fan going. Um, do you hear the fan in the back? I have a ceiling fan going. Um, oh, look, I drew on my face. There's a red dot. I'm just, <laughs> sorry, I got distracted by the fact that there's a red dot which I'm now gonna clear. There we go. Um, anyway, can you guys hear the fan? If you can, I'll turn it off. But um, all right, I'm gonna catch up on comments, see what everyone's doing. So let's see. Oh, 36, 36 centigrade. Wait, that's hot, right? If I do my math quickly to Fahrenheit. Isn't that hot? That's really hot. Um, Oh, Lori's working on her first Palm Canyon. 
I hope it will fit. Well, have you, Lori, have you gotten a chance to look at, um, just for a little, a little like happy inspiration at um, the finished Palm Canyons? I, I put a bunch of them up on Instagram. Um, so I, ho I hope you'll be uh, inspired. Um, oh, it's eight o'clock, it's still hot. Yeah, oh, 91 degrees in Arizona. Yeah, my dad lives in Arizona and um, there was a really bad fire. Uh, which is bad. Um, Susan, you're late, but you're here. That's okay. Oh, yay. You don't, you guys don't hear the fan. Okay. So wait, I have to, I have to tell you, Anne said your hair looks great. <laughs> so first of all, I, it's still wet. I just got out of the, I got out of the shower recently. So it's still a little damp and it's got um, product in it. But if ever there was a reason for you guys to follow me on Instagram, you need to go over to my Instagram account right now because I don't want to hold it up on the screen because I don't want this immortalized forever on, um, on YouTube. So I put it in the Instagram story so it'll disappear. But um, if tell me, has anyone gone to Instagram and seen my story? Because for all of you, I posted a picture of my hair this morning. Because for those of you who are unfamiliar with the concept of curly hair, First of all, when we get our hair cut, we get it cut dry. And so when your hair is dry and you kind of pull it out and you purposely like pull all the curls out. Anyway, it's a picture of my hair and my hair comes, it's like this. You have, you have to see it. It's, it's, it's not okay. It's not okay. Um, all right, so we're good at catching up. Uh, what do you think of the new, oh, the new Ravelry design? Oh, I, sorry, I got confused a second. I thought you were talking sweater design. <laughs> like, really focused. The new Ravelry um, uh, redesign of the website. So here's the thing. Um, and I'm now working with my own web developer on my site because I'm learning so much. So uh, apparently, um, there's a lot of issues that I didn't understand. So there's a lot of issues uh, in the opening, the login screen, which is so cute and has like floating and moving balloons. But for a lot of people, those moving images are no, no cute, not okay. Um, they trigger migraines and there's been some, some, some you know, really eye, bad eye stuff. And so I know they're working on it. Um, I don't, fully understand everything about it. My mother, who's an OT, occupational therapist, I'm sure would be able to explain it to me more about what happens in your brain. Um, so it has something to do with also the color scheme. And anyway, there's some, there's, there's some challenges. Um, so there you go. Uh, all right, I'm catching up, I'm catching up. Yeah, 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 Emily, yes, about the headaches. Yeah, so I'm, I'm really, I'm really hoping. Um, oh, Nancy, I'm really hoping they fix it. Nancy, did you just check Instagram? <laughs> um, yeah. So Billy, yes. So I said the same thing. Uh, Billy said that there's a link to go to the classic view. Yes. Um, and the only thing that I think would really help is you can, when you log out, so sometimes you get logged out, right? When you log out, you still are, have to log back in through that initial screen, which is the one with the moving icons. So if they change the login screen to totally stationary, if they basically change the login screen to classic, to the old color scheme, the old, uh, then I think if you log in in classic, and the first page is classic. And then from there you can choose old or new. I think it would solve a lot. Um, oh yeah, Emily just, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Emily just literally typed exactly what I said. So sorry, sometimes I, I yeah, <laughs> it takes me a while. Like I say it and then I read it. And also there's a 30 second delay. So anytime like you say things and I've already, anyway. Um, so. I wanted to give you a little update of what's going on in life um, and, and your knitting and everything. Uh, so there's been a lot going on here because um, in, and I don't remember whether I mentioned this in, 
in a quarantine live or not because I, because things have been really busy. So the last couple quarantine lives, I had a guest, I had Julia Farwell Clay, and then before that it was Virtual Vogue and I did Ask Patty Live and then I had, um, I had Steph and I had Bristol. So I'm not even sure when I mentioned this or if I mentioned this, but anyway, one of the reasons I've been really busy is that um, I had to make the, the difficult, but really literally the only choice, which is to postpone my retreat um, affinity until September of 2021. But there's bad news and there's good news. So that's the bad news that we can't all be together. But I, you know, I, I, I really, I want us to be together when we can, you know, hug and not be six feet apart. And, um, you know, the, the, the resort and God, forgive me if I've said all of this on a live, I don't even remember what I say. It's not like I plan these. I'm just here chatting with you. It is after all quarantine 13. Well, this is what I look like with a facelift. There, for those of you who, who, who didn't meet me when I was in my 30s, you want to see me in my 30s? There, that's me in my 30s. Anyway, um, so please forgive me if I've repeated all this, but the resort is amazing and they ha have made so many changes and they're, they're, they're really on top of it. They, they've, They've actually put you know millions of dollars into the, to, to the resort and they've changed so many things and they've made it so safe and so wonderful. But still there, there's things that you can do for a family traveling that's going to a resort and are staying with family. Um, and anyway, there's things that you can do for a family staying in a resort that's very different than what you can do for 125 people hanging together. So. That's the, um, that's the bad news. But the good news is one of the things I've been working my little tushy off on is um, virtual affinity. And here's the other good news. Uh, because there's, it's still a cap because I still need to keep the class sizes small enough that um, people can really get a lot out of the class and have a lot of personal interaction with the teachers. But I don't have the physical restraint of the size of the dining room, right, that I had in the resort, which means I, I can make it a little larger. So what that means is soon I will be publishing a blog announcement with the brochure and everything about virtual affinity. There are three registration dates because I need to be fair to the people that registered for, two, for the 2020 live event and to the people that were on the wait list for the 2020 event. So basically it's gonna go like this. There's a registration opening date for virtual affinity with a password for everyone that's booked into affinity for 2020. Then there's, and that's, they just get like a couple days head start. Then there's a secondary date with a password for everyone that's on the wait list and then I'm going to open it up to the public. So I'm pretty sure that even if every single person that booked 2020 wants to do virtual, which I don't think every single person can necessarily. And if every single person on the wait list joins me, I still think I'm going to have room for at least another 20 people. So it'll basically be, you know, 20, 20, 30, maybe even 40 spots, depending on how many people can't attend from the, the book. So that's the good news. Um, and there's, it's going to be like no virtual event you've ever seen. We're going to do some crazy stuff like a live fashion show. Um, anyway, there's, there's going to be a lot. So it's, it's a lot of fun stuff. Um, so that's one thing that that's kept me um, really busy. Uh, Oh, thank you, Anne. Anne just said, I just finished how to read your knit stitches and master the pattern. Love this type of class. Thank you. Um, I'm working on all sorts of new classes too. The other thing that's been keeping me really busy is trying amongst the virtual teaching that I did for Vogue, which is another reason that I had to like say no to July. I can't. Um, and another reason that I'm probably going to say no to myself 
for teaching another live round of classes on my own platform in July is I, I taught live on my platform in May, and um, which I did easy does it. I did two di different sessions of that. Then I taught four classes at the beginning of June, two sessions of Make Your Gauge Work, two sessions of Perfect Your Knitting. I'm doing two more sessions this weekend. Um, then uh, I need to take a pause because the video sweater class for this fall is really, 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 really behind. I'm still in the swatching process. Normally I'd be knitting the sample by now and filming the tutorials. So it's a little behind, but I am really happy with how things are coming out. I was playing with the neck, some neck shaping ideas. This is just like a little, little prototype. Um, cables. But also one thing I've learned is, um, I think I want to focus because I'm already doing so much with this sweater. Like it can be a pullover. You can make a cardigan. It's, um, you know, uh, uh, it's unisex. You can have straight shaping. You can have waist shaping. You can have A-line shaping. I was also going to toss in a brand new construction of um, a saddleback, but it's too much lily gilding. Not only does it make it way complicated mathematically to design with all the cables, but also I think I want to save that trick for when um, I have either a simple body stitch pattern and then a really complex stitch pattern that goes up over the shoulders onto the back, a saddleback or the other way around, right? Complicated stitch pattern in the body and then, you know, solid separating it. But the cable on cable, it, it was too much. Um, it was too much. So anyway, um, oh, Jane, how do you sign up for virtual affinity? So again, uh, that, that's why I was saying, I don't know if you just joined me. I was saying there's gonna be three different um, registration dates. So it'll, so as always, you need to subscribe to the newsletter. You need to subscribe to my blog, keep up to date you know, on all that stuff, because I'll be announcing it on my blog when um, the registration opens to the public. Uh, it's looking like if you want to do a potential save the date, we're still having some glitches with the registration software, which I don't know if Pam is here, my trusty, my trusty everything. I don't know if Pam's here. Um, she might be, <laughs> she might be too busy working, but Pam's um, does all my IT and she's been um, working her patootie off trying to get the registration site up and running because it's really complicated with the packages and the virtual access and the built-in links and all that stuff. So anyway, I'll, I'll say when we're hoping the date is that opens to the public, we're hoping the date is July 6th. Um, but if you know the site isn't ready, everything might in fact um, domino. So that might be... Um, that might be not so, not so good. Um, Kim says you do too much. Oh yeah, thanks. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, it, it, it's been, it, yeah. <laughs> um, it's funny because people think, I don't know what people think sometimes. If people think I'm a big company or, I'm just me. I'm just me. I have some people that help me with some things. Um, but I'm mostly just me. So Pam helps me with the crazy technical issues. And, but I mean, basically, I, you know, I, I was, I was on a, a, I was doing a cocktail night last night with, um, uh, well with, with, I, I don't know why I'm like not with a friend of mine, anyway, a friend of mine in the industry, I won't say who it is. And, um, I was just saying, I just feel a little bit like a computer programmer and not like a knitwear designer. So if I add up the hours that I've spent on doing things like building websites and dealing with the tech and the versus needles in my hand, it's like no joke, a hundred to one. <laughs> like it'd be the equivalent of I knit one stitch. I spend a hundred hours on tech. So um, that soup's tedious. 
Um, anyway, uh, Lynette says, I'm eager for your fall class. I'm, I'm, I'm getting there. I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm working really hard. Um, I think, I think, I think eliminating the idea of trying to gild the lily and doing a construction that's brand new to me, which is Saddleback. I've done Saddle Shoulder, but Saddleback is way more mathematically complicated. And you know what? I think I, I think it's just, I, I don't, okay, here, here's the thing. I'll be honest. I'm going to be honest. I think I, I need to like dance faster than I think I need to, to keep y'all entertained. That's the, so that's the honest to God truth. So honest to God, when I designed Palm Canyon, I was mad worried. So Palm Canyon, yes, it's a fun construction. Yes, it has some cool tricks. It has like a really unique neck divide here. It has a crazy unvented neck divide here that keeps like, keeps it all, you know, running and finished perfectly. And, and I, you know, I built in some fun tricks about my, um, uh, oh, this is really wadded up. I should be better with my sweaters. I'm, I've got them all like wadded up over here. But I worried so much that the stitch pattern was too simple and there was too much stockinette and you guys would be bored and there wouldn't be enough like challenging stuff in it. And, and, I, and, I, and you know what? I, I worried about the same thing with Hudson Valley Cardi, which had the fun, interesting cable going along the opening, but a lot of stockinette because it was a modified drop shoulder. It was a simple shape. And I, I clearly don't learn. <laughs> Because both for Hudson Valley Cardi and for Palm Canyon, people like were over the moon. They loved it. Pe and people were saying like, ah, it's just the right amount of like relaxing knitting. And so I think I, I think I, I think I overdo it when I think like, well, I have to present a brand new construction and like really complicated ways to build it and interesting stitch patterns. And I have to do two different yarns and two, you know, like already this is gonna be in two different yarns. It's gonna be cardigan or pullover. So who am I, wh why can't I just stop? What's basically what's wrong with me is the issue. Um, there you go. So, this is going to have stockinette. It's gonna have a center cable. So there's gonna, like, this is the real width of the, of the cable, right? Whoops. Um, so there's gonna be stockinette on the side. There's gonna be, plenty, which I think, I think stockinette on the side rather than reverse stockinette allows you flexibility in shaping because it's so easy to shape in stockinette, right? Um, which means you can do a line, you could do waist shaping, you could do straight shaping. Stockinette is what we buy. It's what we buy in the store. And I don't know why I was thinking Saddleback too, because I also already have the integrated pocket within the cable, right? So I'm already doing a lot. And you know, basically this is me admitting, I just, um, uh, you know, it's quarantine time. So we're all getting, being a lot more honest with each other. So I'm just going to be really honest with you. It, it's la it's low self-esteem <laughs> because I feel like, uh, you know, we all, all, all designers look at other designers and go, oh my God, oh my God, they're so creative. Like, how do they come up with all this stuff? And, you know, everybody looks at everybody else and says, I'm a hack. I'm a dilettante. I'm a faker. They're the real deal. I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing and they're, and I'm going to get found out. Everyone, every designer. So, so that often makes um, my Lily gilding. So there you go. Um, does that, by the way, does anyone watch Top Chef? Cause if anyone watch Top Chef that I just finished the all-star season and there's this guy, uh, his last name was Malarkey. I forgot his first name. Um, and I kept thinking like, he's the, he's the top chef equivalent of me. Because like the judges would always say, you know, Malarkey, you used 14 ingredients when eight would have been really good. Just like, stop, 
So anyway, that that's me all over. That's me all over. I just try to please. I try I try way too hard to please. Okay, I'm catching up. I'm catching up. I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm reading. I'm going back. I'm going back. Um, yeah, Ravelry issues. Yes, yes, Gloria, I'm with you. I'm I'm I I do have faith in Cassidy that that you know. I believe everyone in the team of Ravelry does care, and I'm just hoping that it it gets solved. That is what I'm hoping. Um, Love the sweater, yay. I've been knitting since the Kennedy administration. I'm just a lazy knitter. Well, Mel, I hope you're up for a little bit of cable action within the stockinette because because here's the thing. For those of you who've done like Hudson Valley Cardi, that video sweater class or um, uh, uh, Rising Spades, anytime I have lace, I've got a lot of tutorials about lace, about how to read your lace, about fixing mistakes in lace. Um, so I'm gonna have a lot of tutorials on cables, reading your cables, fixing your mistakes in cables, avoiding making mistakes in cables, all that stuff. Um, Susan, you know I never share what the yarn's going to be for the cow, but I will tell you there's two different varieties. Um, interchangeable engage, uh, two different, so that gives you two different price points and two different fibers. So, so there, so there's gonna be a wool and there's gonna be an alpaca blend and there's two different distinct price points. Um, that'll give everyone a lot. Yes, tech and web development. I, I don't know how people do it. Um, <laughs> Eileen said, did you give the yarn choice? You guys know I never give you your yarn choice until the, until the link is available and ready to purchase the yarn. Um, Cause you know, it, uh, again, quarantine live, it's time for, you know, real honesty. You all know that these things take me thousands quite literally thousands of hours to produce um, all the videos, all the, and you know, then I'm basically presenting a full video class with, with private instruction via Ravelry with everyone being like, my size is this, what, um, which, you know, would cost a lot um, for very little. Uh, so without being able to capture a portion of the yarn sales, um, this would not be possible for me. Um, so there, uh, but always, I always still choose the yarn that's right for the design. You, you always know that. Um, oh, people, yeah, uh, please. Well, Anne, I hope you're willing to give cables a shot though. I mean, like I said, there's still plenty of stock in it, but there is a center cable motif and, um, it's going to be great. And I did... And, and for the next shaping, I built it right into the chart. So uh, what I don't want people to worry about is having to learn how to shape in a cable. By the way, this is the other reason I decided to abandon saddle, the saddle back. It's because originally I was thinking a very wide motif, but then I ended up liking the look of the shaping within the cable so much. And if I did that wide motif, it would wreck that. So this shaping that goes with the shape of the cable is all built into the chart. So you can just follow it and you don't have to, you know, learn how to shape in cable. Um, so there we go. Uh, I missed the yarn for the cow. That's because I didn't tell it to you. You know, I never tell you the cow yarn until it's time to announce. Um, PJ says, I would encourage anyone that has issues with Rav uh, to sign up to be a beta tester. Yeah, you know what, PJ, I signed up to be a beta tester, but I wasn't helpful. I wasn't helpful because I didn't, I don't have those vision issues and I don't have the, some of the, the um, migraine issues that people are having trouble with. So I was not a helpful beta tester. So there. Um, oh yeah, Lynette, the alpacas. To die for. Um, Oh, thank you, Ruth. That's a big time bargain for the amount of time you put into the class. Well, I mean, I'm not, I, so here's the thing about my yarn choices and bargain. Um, so first of all, I try to keep the class itself really reasonable for those that, you know, never buy retail and, and enter at the beginning. So again, this pattern is going to be many patterns in one, right? Because you could knit the, you could knit a cardigan with waist shaping for yourself. Then you can knit a cardigan, you know, straight line 
longer to be your oversized cardigan or, or as a gift for, for anyone. Um, you could do an A-line. Then there's the pullover version, all the shaping. So, you know, it's going to be like six patterns in one. Um, but with the yarn, I also really do keep the overall um, project cost in mind, which you probably noticed in all my yarn choices, right? Um, a cotton, no, no, not, sorry, not a cotton for cables. Mm -mm, you would not be happy with, happy with that. So unfortunately for cables, um, you're gonna want a protein fiber. So cotton and cables is, and linen and cables, there's a reason you never see that. Um, because uh, it's incredibly heavy and it won't hold its shape. But um, I, can, I just have to say the name Drunken Duncan. Um, if you're looking for, uh, like if you're um, uh, a vegan, because um, there are vegans you know, who, who don't wanna use, and, and people confuse that. Because so by the way, I used to work in the yarn store and, I, and one, of the, one of the people that worked in the store with me was vegan. And she would say to me all the time, I wish people would stop confusing vegan and vegetarian because if one more person explains to me that the sheep is not killed, she's like, I know the sheep is not killed. That's just not a vegan doesn't take products from an animal. So she didn't, she was vegan. Um, so do not poo poo a high quality acrylic. So a high quality acrylic, like a low petroleum, high quality acrylic can be great in cables. So that's a better alternative um, than cotton. Cotton, and there's a reason if you Google like 100% linen cable patterns, you're not going to find a lot <laughs> or cotton cable patterns. You're not going to find a lot. Um, yes, Gloria, I totally agree. She says Ravelry cares. It will be fixed. I, it's just about the speed. Um, I saw a blurb someplace, can't remember where, about different best ways to do a v-neck. Is that in one of your classes? Yeah, I have, a, I have an awesome v-neck trick in um, Patty's Knitting Bag of Tricks. So there. Um, so what, what are you all knitting right now? Because I, I, I put the title of this um, YouTube live, The Memory of Stitches, because I just wanted to talk about that for a second. I'm interested to see how you guys feel, because I've been thinking a lot about that. I've been thinking a lot about that lately. So my, there are so many things that um, trigger our memories. Obviously, uh, smell is one. That's a big one. Um, sounds like hearing a song. But how many of you um, instantly remember where you were when you were knitting something, what was going on in your life when you were knitting something, when you uh, look at that project? Uh, and I the idea of the memory of stitches is I feel like we are, we are knitting, they're like tiny little time capsules. So I've been thinking about that a lot lately because um, there have been some hard times recently um, for, for, for everybody, right? And I, I was worried about like, oh, will I, like, will this fall sweater class, will I, when I whenever I put on this, sweater. Because by the way, everything I design, these are my clothes. <laughs> I only design things I actually want to wear. So perhaps that limits me as a designer, but there you go. Um, and then I remembered many, many years ago, I served on the grand jury at, uh, in, in um, Brooklyn, and it was, it was devastating. It was devastatingly difficult. Um, so it's not, when you serve on a grand jury, you're doing the indictments, right? So first of all, you're getting eight to, to 12 cases a day. You, and you have to keep a little book and you have to record them because you don't hear a case in its entirety. Someone will come in, they'll present some evidence, they go away, but that case is still open. Three days later, someone else has to come in. So you're keeping track of a lot. But that's not why it's devastatingly difficult. I keep playing with my swatch, which is why I keep looking down. Um, cause I really like this neck. Um, but I, I lived in Brooklyn. I live in Brooklyn. I live in Kings County and Kings County has, um, the most active grand jury. Um, and 
a lot of the crimes that we had to hear involved children. And it was really difficult. Like I didn't, um, oh my God, this was years ago. And I think I'm starting to tear up remembering it. Um, I didn't sleep at all. Uh, and I, it was very hard. They did allow you to knit. And I <laughs> remember exactly what I was knitting. I was knitting a clap of tea because I wanted something really mindless that I could put down, pick up, pick down, pick up. Cause you know, you're not allowed to knit while someone's presenting. That's all they ask. Um, and I was the assistant jury foreman. So I had a lot of information that I had to keep track of. So you're knitting between the cases. And I, what I worried about was that I would never want to look at that project. And every time I put it on or, 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 or wore it, it would, it would have those bad memories. But what I found was what is trapped in the scarf, what's inextricably bound for me in the clap of tea was not the, the terrible things that I had to hear was not um, witnessing so much pain, uh, but it was the fact that the knitting kept me sane. So, um, so anyway, I just, I, I've been thinking a lot about that. And I, and I, there've been a lot of people saying they need, um, a lot of people have been commenting on Palm Canyon that the reason they liked it, it was as good <laughs> pandemic knitting because it was some simple, some, st some simple stockinette, you know, that slip stitch rib is very, um, and not everyone has had the mental bandwidth. And actually the reason I'm struggling with this design is I, it, it's, it's gonna be easy for y'all to knit, but it's complex to design. It's very complex to design to try to create something that both works as a cardigan and a pullover. You have no idea how complicated it is. It's not just like, oh, we'll cut it in half. So I'm not having the mental bandwidth to design it right now, which is why it's gonna be a little behind, but it, it will be there, trust me. So, um, yeah, what I think, what I'm hoping that everyone will have in the memory of their stitches is not the hard times, is not anything, you know, cause we're all going through so much, you know, people, some of you out there have lost people, um, lost family, lost friends. Um, we're all struggling in our businesses to keep, uh, you know, our heads above water and our mortgage paid. But what I'm hoping is that the stitches don't hold the trauma, they hold the relief from the trauma. Um, and that is what I believe. So um, that is what I hope for all of you. I'm gonna catch up on your comments because, um, oh my God, they're coming in fast and furious. Um, oh, look at you all. Oh, the tubular cast on, oh, tubular cast on is the best. Okay, I'm knitting a pair of socks, top down pullover and a tank top, yeah, you know. It's important to have three different projects going at once. That's also. Um, oh, Jan says, I always remember from watching TV. I remember what show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. Totally. And particularly like if I'm binging a show. So if like a project is, um, you know, one whole season of something, then I kind of connect it with that. Um, yeah. Lynette says, every garment I make has a connection or a story. It's so true. Um, oh, Anne's got six different pieces, six different pieces each of the first six weeks of shelter in place. Oh my God, that's awesome. Uh, oh, Coco and it's Emma. Nice brioche. Very good. A little brioche. Um, and I know, I know I, I've had so many requests because I have the advanced knitting fixes DVD. So before anyone asks, I know I've had so many requests of, can I do a fixing brioche? tutorial. I'm working on it. We'll get there. I promise. Um, but I want to have a pattern to go up anyway. Well, why do I talk? Who cares? Um, oh, knitting a shawl and gradient yarn. Nice. But oh, bubble trouble scarf. I don't know that one. Wait. Uh, oh, no, it just jumped. Bubble trouble scarf. Oh, crazy colors. Brioche double knitting. <laughs> oh, just yeah. It's, you know, if you're going to do brioche, definitely mix it with double knitting. <gasps> Oh, look at you guys go, Hugo pullover. Oh, I love a good cable pattern. Good, excellent. Um, 
Yeah. And my husband, by the way, I, I didn't, I, I, well, I did sort of make a promise. I haven't knit a sweater for him in a really long time, although I've knit him so many sweaters, but I haven't ever designed him a sweater. So he wants the pullover. He doesn't want the cardigan. Um, so what I have to do is make sure that I have enough yardage that I ordered from Webs. Um, so there you go. Oh, cold New Zealand. Oh, talk to us about the cold because it is, oh, here, let's see. Yesterday it was 98. No, I'm lying. Sorry. Yesterday it was 92 or something. Today I think it's going to be 88, which is not bad. So yeah, talk to me, talk to me about the cold. Um, oh, Lori's slowly working on Palm Canyon. Okay. That's okay. Cause there's no rush. We're not going anywhere. Um, oh, oh wait, the comment just jumped away. Oh, Jane says, I always remember finishing Soho slip stitch pullover on the 10th. Oh, that's so nice. Oh yeah. The relief from the trauma. It's true. Um, Oh, Patty says, I remember what book I'm listening to. You know, I, 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 I've been doing a lot of podcasts while I knit, but I, um, I think I want to do more audio books. So by the way, if anyone has a recommendation for a great audio book, um, leave it in the comments. Cause I want to, I want to find out doing a hundred color cowl. Wait, is it literally a hundred colors <laughs> or is that just the name? I want to know if it's literally a hundred colors. Um, ninth patch for uh, Arnie and Carlos quarantine. Cal, excellent, excellent. Um, oh, wait, trying to, yeah, oh, the volition. Were you, so M. Cruz, I saw someone who posted, I don't know if it's the same. It was a, it was a cardigan and it was giant. Was that you? Um, because don't forget when you have questions. So I don't know if it was picking the wrong base size or a gauge issue. Um, but don't forget to check in with me on the RAV group if you're thinking you're choosing the wrong base size. Because, um, you know, we generally pick a base size that's too large. That's what I cover in Easy Does It, Secrets, Unraveling the Secrets of Ease and Sweater Construction. Um, <gasps> PJ says, my greatest knitting trauma ever was accidentally pulling out a needle in a brio shock. <gasps> oh, that hurts my heart. Um, <gasps> Drunken Duncan, I'll probably never wear the pullover I've been knitting or the cardigan. Oh, well, like I said, I, I, I hope that what, what you you know, put it aside for a while and come back. You may be surprised. Honestly, I thought there were so many tears connected with that clap of tea. I would never want to look at it. But yeah, what came out was that the clap of tea is what kept me, kept me sane and kept me grounded and kept me. So I don't know, come back to it and see, put it away. And when you're ready to look at it, you're ready to look at it. You'll know when you know. Um, there you go. Oh my God. Since lockdown, I made six sweaters. <gasps> whoa, whoa. All while watching Netflix. Let me ask you, does anyone else, when you watch Netflix and you've been binging for a while, does anyone get that pop-up that says, are you still watching? And does anyone feel judged by the pop-up? Like it's saying you shouldn't still be watching? but I am, but I am, I am still watching. Anyway, maybe that's just me. I just feel judged. Um, oh, so that wasn't you. Okay. So go, come on over to the Ravelry group and post a question. That's what they're there for. Um, I could not read, I could knit, not knit and read subtitles. You can. <laughs> Um, that's one of the things I, I, I do in um, bionic knitting. We really do focus on learning how to knit without looking down, which is awesome. Um, oh, you took a Bristol's brioche class. I hear that class is awesome. Um, uh, with affinity postponed, pressure's off. 
I know, but we are still going to have a fashion show. It's going to be amazing. Um, oh, you guys are giving me great recommendations. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yes, I do get the pop up and I feel completely judged. I totally feel judged. Like I often talk back and say, yeah, I am still watching. Do you have a problem with that? Um, yeah. If you skip the intros or pause, then the pop-up doesn't appear? <gasps> I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, yeah, anyway, I feel totally judged. So, um, so speaking of <laughs> watching Netflix and being behind, I am going to hop off soon because I did get one worried, I got a worried message through a friend that um, Steve from Webs just wanted to check in to make sure that video sweater class was still happening in the fall. I promise it's still happening. It's just not going on sale in August. Um, true confession, not going to be ready. But um, I'd rather do it right and really load this up with tutorials and make sure that the sizing is right for a really broad range of sizes and that the shaping is right. Because now I'm working on the, I'm playing around with my with my cardigan one. There's my cardigan with my with my integrated pocket, which I just think is so super fun. And I want to work on the charting for the neck shaping of this, which is going to be a sort of wacky combination of a little bit of a nip within the cable, but then also it um, fully fashion shaping and moving. So it's going to be really nice. But anyway, because this one this one has the this is the the pullover has the nipping within the cable. So all the shaping is done within the cable. Um, and then shawl collar and buttons, and it's gonna be so good. And I forgot my button box back in Brooklyn. I need to get my button box because I wanna I wanna decide on buttons. So um, anyway, that's it. Um, I'm hoping, oh, by the way, I remember I said, I said last week, um, I wasn't sure whether or not Long Island Yarn and Farm would be able to join me this week because not only is it shearing season, but um, new animals are being born like on the farm all the time. Um, so anyway, I'm hoping she can join me um, next week. Oh, Freaky Geek says, I've never done a pocket before. That would be neat to learn. You wanna know a secret? So I have knit them before. This is my first pocket design. So I wanted to be fancy instead of doing uh, just a patch pocket. I wanted to I wanted to challenge myself. I wanted to get schmancy with the integrated pocket, with like within the cable. So I wanted to get a little schmancy for you guys. But remember, these things are schmancy to design. They're not so schmancy um, to knit. Okay, that's all. I am so grateful for all of you. I'm so grateful for your company. Um, that's all. <laughs> I just am. I just really am. So um, I'm just, I'm just really thankful to have this weird little time <laughs> where, you know, I can't see you, but I can read your comments and I, you know, so I thank you for keeping me company. And um, maybe next week we'll bring a guest in. Um, there you go. I'm going to try to find this thing. Hold on. This is always hard for me to do. Okay. Yeah, I have to do this two. I have to do this two-step process. Okay, there we go. Um, I have to do this weird two-step process whenever I log sign in and sign out because when I do it through Zoom, it's way more complicated. But um, I'm gonna say thank you and goodbye. Because now, with no air conditioning in this room, I'm beginning to get a little schwitzy. Um, so, let's do our sign off, shall we? Everyone together, here we go. What do we say? Wash your hands, don't touch your face, knit on. Okay, I'll see you guys next week. Bye, thank you guys so much for coming, <laughs> bye. <laughs>